Five Line Sports Network. It's been an eventful day. It's been an eventful week. Definitely been an eventful week for Florida State fans and um, Miami fans. And um, I don't really care about the Miami fan part, but it's, it's been eventful for them because we've been nonstop told that um, Daryl Jackson would be going back to Miami and all this other stuff has been said. Um, and it, it, I kept telling people on my side, I'm like, well, the young man hasn't said anything to anybody that I know, nor has said anything to me stating that he's going back to Miami. So I fully expect him to enroll at Florida State because I've heard nothing otherwise. The last thing that I heard was they expect him to enroll at Florida State by today. He enrolled at Florida State today. But obviously there was Miami um, fans and Miami content creators that said that it was trending back that way, that he was going to go there. I am going to share this on the screen. See how this looks real quick. Um, I'll have to go to it. And let's see why there's no sound, because I don't know why there's no sound. But let me see what I can figure out. Look, here's, here's what, what I can say. say hey, we're on, on the tackle, tackle real quick. Stuff. Stuff. Flo, can, can you provide, provide some insight on Jackson, like, like what happened? happened? Look, here's, here's what, what I can say, and it's stuff that's already been reported, so I can talk about, about it. it. Our, Our coach, coach went out to see him late, late last week. week. You know, uh, I, think I think it was Thursday. Thursday. I'm not 100%, but I think, I think it was Thursday. Thursday. And they had a really good conversation. And it seems like uh, Jackson would like to come back. And that's the way it's trending. That's the way it is looking like it's going to happen. Um, they're, so it's wrong to tackle real quick. Flo, so, so, can you provide some insight on Jackson? So, yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much how that went. There was quite a few of those people that said those things, not just him. That's just the one that I seen last, and that's the one that I used. But he did enroll at Florida State today. Mm-hmm. So all of the BS that he wanted to go back to Miami and that Miami was offering him all this money, and he was worried about Florida State um, NIL not going through and all of that bullshit that was said by everyone that said it. Um, was obviously completely untrue. He went on Instagram Live last night, Daryl Jack or Daryl Jackson did last night. He went on and said, I am a knoll. And he made a couple of um emojis. Uh one was family and one was the money bag. Um, so I, I'm gonna say that that means that the NIL from Florida State works and it worked, uh, because that's what that meant. I don't think you say I'm a knoll talking about Miami's money. So obviously last night he let everybody know that he was a knoll and today he confirmed it by enrolling in the classes. So I don't feel like I keep repeating myself. Daryl Jackson is enrolled at Florida state university, which therefore means he is going to be a Florida state Seminole come the 2023 season. Um, the waiver is going to be either approved or not approved by the NCAA, not by Miami. So I don't know where all of that came from either. Now they can, they can help the situation by basically writing a recommendation from what I understand, stating that they think that he should be able to play and all this other shit, but that doesn't determine whether he gets to or doesn't. That's just a letter of recommendation. Um, So I'm not a hundred percent sure why everybody got so hung up on the, the Daryl Jackson thing and why everybody freaked out because obviously he's here and we've got others that are coming here as well. Like Roddick, everybody expects Roddick to enroll as well if he hadn't already, but um, the expectations are that Roddick is going to enroll as well where media threw up a, a huge fit stating that he was going to go back to Colorado, that Dion was getting him to stay basically the same storyline that we just had for Daryl Jackson. Uh, Roddick is fully expected to enter uh, into Florida State and um, enroll into his classes, and he's fully expected to be a Florida State Seminole in the 2023 season. So I'm I'm not sure uh, why media from these other schools or other universities wanted to throw this huge monkey wrench in everything that was going on, Um, but it's just not true. Uh, James, what are your thoughts on – the Daryl Jackson situation and the Miami fans and media. 
Well, I think one of the things that we as a fan base have to kind of slow down and, and we have to take ourselves out of it and everything's not a big troll fest and everybody's not an insider and sometimes people are just trying to get things to get your people riled up. And if you kind of take your, what they call it, the receipts and you look at who some of these people are, they're consistently wrong. And then, but they're, but the one cool thing is they don't take any accountability forever being wrong. They just don't talk about it anymore. And this is what they do because they haven't been able to win anything um, as of recent. And even when they were good, some of the best teams that they had, they were only able to taste glory for half of a second. And that's that 0-1 team. So when you have this situation, it looks bad and it kind of dampers what Miami's trying to build themselves back to. We're this badass team. We got we we got our old guy back. He's gonna bring us back to the '80s. We have another line ass Cuban that's gonna come in, and he's got he's our money back. He's got um he's da- he's our daddy Warbucks. So he's gonna we can buy anybody. We can do this. We can have this class. It's very showy, very pizzazz. And I think when you're able to say, oh well, we made this recruit flip here to Miami. Well, when you lose a guy to your rival that just pummeled you, it makes things like a little bit different and you have to try to save face. And I think that's where we got to step back and just, even if we didn't, didn't get Jackson. Jackson's a great, a great piece, a guy who I think probably could become a starter, but at most this 2024 season, if the waiver is clear, he's a rotational piece in the beginning. So, but for Miami, he's a starter for the university of Miami. So, that is, and then when they miss, they haven't really hit that much of the D tackle or in their trenches in general. Everything was supposed to be here. I remember hearing reports that um, Mario is going to try to bring in forty to fifty new players. Well, right now they're they're struggling in this transfer portal market, so it's not looking um, the same way. So I think we just have to kind of just chill out on that. But I will say that there were was some there was something to it, and um, even if it's not as big of a deal as what people may think. But I think as a fan base, and then even as a kid, as a young man, he's making some tough decisions. But one of my friends, Dibby, said, if you're committed to us, just go ahead and sign the paperwork. Like, go ahead and, like, like do what's necessary. And when he kind of snapped back at him, when I get it, I, I always tell people, let's not pretend that the story isn't there and that you're not a part of it. Um, to quote one of my favorite TV fictional characters, Don Draper, if you don't like what's being said, change the conversation. You could have easily just deaded all of this, signed as a student at Florida State, and let this thing take care of, especially when a lot of people bought on to, you know, you coming back because, you know, you have a family member sick, don't know who it is, but don't know how true it is, but that was one of the reasons. And and if the money's, the money's right, but from, you know, other things that we're hearing now, too, is that, they tried to do some shady business. They didn't even just, they weren't, they, they tried to get some of our players to become a flip um, to come over there, which to me is, I, and I just made a great reel for my show today. Um, Big games BS where I just talked about like, Odell would never like, this is child endangerment at its, at its, at the least. And why do you say that James? Nobody puts a shade nose in a situation where they have to guard a running back on a wheel route. And if you remember, there's a play where um, Lawrence Toafili is running a wheel route and you see Daryl Jackson trying to run with Lawrence Toafili on a wheel route in a live American football game. This is gross neglect. This is child endangerment. This man could have, like, he should have never even wavered. Like, just seeing that alone would have made me not want to ever come back here. And I said, Odell would never put a guy, put a young man in that kind of danger, because that's what he was in, was danger. You should never. Yeah, absolutely. And i seen where Miami fans were posting that video where he was supposed to be covering Lawrence Toa Philly on the wheel route. And me personally, I don't believe that Kevin still ever made that play call. Um, I don't know who made that play call, but I can guarantee you that it wasn't anybody that had any sense to have a D tackle trying to cover one of the fastest guys on the field on a wheel route. Makes absolutely no sense. 
James timed out. If he comes back in, I'll put him back on the screen. Um, as of right now, guys, what I'm getting at with all of this is be very careful who you listen to on the other side. Um, we've got, you know, Miami fans and Miami media saying that Daryl Jackson was coming back and uh, that they're that they were going to get him back because. Uh, Mario and um, Ruiz could afford to bring him back. They could pay whatever they wanted to pay to bring him back. And, you know, that that high-end talk that Miami does. Um, and the facts are he's enrolled at Florida State. So all of that BS that was said and all of that, that hype and garbage talk and just – I don't understand why everyone got so hung up on what – Daryl Jackson was doing based off of what Miami said when all in all, and I don't know if someone on Florida state's media side said that it was trending that way, that he was going back, but if that's true, then they were fully believing someone over there as well. Cause they never heard that from that kid. He never said that he was going back to Miami. Um, so I, I really just don't agree with just, I want our fan base to listen to our media. Don't listen to anyone else's media. Um, and if our media did make a mistake and say that uh, – it's right here, buddy. But if they did make the mistake and say that Daryl Jackson was going back to Miami, they were wrong. It's just not true. And I, I, It's the same way with this Roddick situation. Everybody keeps saying that he's going back to Colorado and that's just not true. The kids fully expected to enroll here at Florida state. I'm not sure that he hasn't, uh, but if he hasn't, he's fully expected to, and I fully expect him to. So Florida state's transfer class is going to end up in the top five. Um, and I, you know, I made a post on Twitter. It was actually multiple posts on Twitter about the five stars that were putting Florida State in their top 15, top 10, top five, top three schools. You got Cam Davis that's already verbally committed. He's a five-star running back out of Georgia. Now, will Georgia come after him hardcore? Absolutely. There's going to be multiple schools come after him hardcore, but Georgia's going to definitely come after him with everything in the kitchen sink. Uh, Florida State's got to do a good job of keeping that relationship, keeping him entertained with Florida State being the best place for him. And it's not begging anyone to come here. That is not what I'm saying when I say this. What I'm saying is you got to make sure that these young athletes know that they have a place on this team no matter what. Uh, we want them here no matter what. We have uh, a system set up for them to succeed here at Florida State. It's a offense built for playmakers. He's a playmaker. He's the playmaker that's going to make the plays for us in the running back position. It's those things that you keep making sure that that young man knows and you keep making sure that no one else um, gets in there and, and starts whispering in his ear. So that means that someone from Florida State has to be in that young man's ear 24-7 and as much as he wants it and as much as he'll allow it because you want him here, so therefore you got to let him know that constantly so that no one else can get into his ear. You know, It's just like if you've got a girlfriend, you don't want to allow – every Tom, Dick, or Harry to keep going in there saying, oh, well, I can do this better than he can. I can give you this. He can't. You make sure that you keep your girl happy, and you always keep her. That's just how it works. Um, now, sometimes that doesn't work out no matter what you do, and it just happens. But it doesn't mean that it's lack of your, of your effort. It's got to be because of someone else's shortcoming, not because of yours. And Florida State can't have any of them moments to where we have a shortcoming with these four- and five-star athletes. We have to start landing them in the high school recruiting, and we will. Um, I told everyone, and I'm still standing beside this, 2024 will be the highest-ranked recruiting class out of high school that the Norvell era has had. And there will be um, a couple, if not – there will probably be two or three five-stars I would expect us to land – um, and I'm not saying that they won't be dialed down to a four star after they commit to Florida State because y'all know how that goes. But we will have a much better ranked 2024 class than we've had in the previous three years here at Florida State under the Norvell coaching staff. How do I know that or why do I say that? 
It's the same way when they're actually visiting places, you'll hear us say constantly, follow the visits, follow the visits. So whoever they're visiting the most, whoever they're visiting the last, that's usually where they end up going. So before you get to that point, you pay attention to how many times a five-star athlete or a high four-star athlete's putting Florida State in their top schools. Florida State's trending right now in the upward trajectory of the four- and five-star athletes because of, one, what we did this season, two, what we're potentially going to be ranked in the 2023 season. Uh, a lot of people are putting out a way-too-early uh, prediction on where Florida State's going to land in the ranking system. But because you have 85%, it's either 85 or 88% of your production coming back to your offense and defense for the next season, which is 2023, and you finished um, – I, f- I want to say the top 15 in defense and you were like, you, you had the best quarterback uh, PFF grade. You had the best uh, run per um, yard after, even after contact before contact, all of that just stuff that they, they put together to decide where you're ranked at. So Florida state has done a very good job in the midway of the season to the end, especially did, a great job in the uh, trenches with keeping those guys here because you are gonna you're gonna have to replace someone like Dylan Gibbons, which we have uh, Bless Harris still to be coming back. You've got Armello that showed huge promise. Then there's guys that you're bringing in through the transfer portal that are going to be able to be vital pieces. Then you've got guys like Early coming up. You've got guys like uh, Quayshon Sapp coming up from the 2022 class. There's just a lot of there's a lot of pieces to your, your trenches are going to be good, so you are probably going to be uh, better off um, depth wise on offense and defensive line than you have been since the entire um, Norvell era. Like this year, you should have more pieces than you've had previous because of one one of your recruiting classes is fully ready to go, the other one's got partial ready to go, then the guys that you've got transferred in, and then the guys that are returning. Uh, Robert Scott could have easily went into the NFL draft. Whether he would have been first round or not, that's not for me to sit there and go back. Um, I don't know what mic you're talking about, what mic issue you're talking about. Um, If anyone else says I have a a mic problem, please let me know. Um, Otherwise, uh, fix your volume. Um, But mainly what I'm getting at is – I didn't think there was any mic issues. There's always some troll on here that's got something to say. Um, And they they probably just want me to say something, so it's all good. But what I really want people to pay attention to is that not only did you get Jordan Travis to come back, not only did Trey Benson come back, and Johnny Wilson came back, and then you had multiple people come back just like uh, Jared Verse. Um, Jared Verse was one of the, the biggest ones that people were worried about. And I don't want to keep saying it, but we all predicted that Jared Verse was going to come back. I did a, a guest appearance on Polk, uh, Polk show, which is 863 Seminole TV, last night. And we went through a lot of that. And we went through a lot of what Florida State's going to be doing. And everybody keeps asking the question about the new uniforms. What are the new uniforms going to be? This is our 10th year anniversary since the 2013 National Championship. So if I had to guess... We're going to have a retro uniform this year at some point. That's my guess. And that's as far as I'm going with it. We'll probably bring back an old uniform. We'll probably wear it at homecoming, something to that nature. Um, Do I know that to be facts? No. But I I do believe that that's what they're talking about when they say new uniform. I don't think we're replacing our whole look and doing all that shit again. We've put too much money and effort into this one. And Nike um, has most of the say-so in that. And I don't see Nike wanting to change the entire uniform this season. Uh, And I could be wrong, but I I don't see that happening. Uh, James, I was, while you were gone, I was talking about how 85%, according to um, ESPN, 85% of the offense and defensive production for Florida State's coming back. And people are putting out way too early predictions on where we're going to land in the top 25. And a lot of ESPN analysts, a lot of Fox analysts, a lot of CBS analysts, are putting us in the number five to number three spot. I personally think that's a little bit too high. 
uh, like too low or whatever you want to say that, but we're we're too close to one. I don't think that Florida State should land number three with having three losses. Um, but I'm trying to read what this one says. Chris and James, what do y'all think about Campbell committing at seven? I'm kind of weirded out about the whole Campbell situation. I mean, he's a transfer, and he put a top five schools up. I'm not used to transfers doing that. I'm used to transfers stating who, they, who they're going to. But maybe he didn't get to go through the recruiting process the first time. I'm not sure. Um, this might be a Miami thing. I don't know. Um, I personally think that Florida State has led the way most of the way on that, and I think he probably will commit to Florida State. But I'm not – I'm not 100% positive on that because I'm not used to a, to a transfer doing it this way. Um, so it's kind of up in the air. It's a 50-50 shot to me because I haven't spoke to him, but it is what it is. James, what I've been uh, talking about mostly is our ranking system and, and how our 85% of our production is coming back. Like I said, do you feel like Florida State will be in the top 10 uh, once this ranking system ends this year and that we come in as the top 10 team for the 2023 season as far as the preseason goes? What, what I personally believe is is that Florida State will probably rank somewhere in between 8 and 11 after all of this is said and done. Um, okay, James joined. All right, yeah, my bad. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah, my fault. I didn't have the um, – I forgot to refresh it. But um, I think when um, we end the season, when we begin next season, we'll be top 10. We still – I think we have a chance to be in the top 10. But um, I saw one way too early ranking that got, that had us like a third, and I'm like, that's just way too, way, way too high for for my liking um, to start the season off. I want us to have to feel like we have a chip on our shoulder and go earn that. But everything is about TV and um, getting eyes. And when you have an opportunity with LSU, um, big fan base, um, big name, and you got Florida State, big fan base, big name, meeting on Labor Day, prime time, you're going to make sure that that game has as much hype surrounding it as possible i mean it did numbers last year with two unranked teams so imagine what it's going to do with two guys now in the top 10 and um even setting the stage nationally because obviously if lsu wins that game they'll be ranked number one but if florida state comes in and they win that game you'll have a top five team um regardless so i think this is just um so i think really they're going to finagle it not so much because of what we've earned but more so because of what they um what they actually feel. I definitely agree. Um, what what I want to know is 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 why everyone, as far as the fan base on Florida State side, because I had multiple people writing me asking me, is this Daryl Jackson character really going to go through this whole process, get everyone's hopes up, and then flip the script and go back to Miami? And I'm trying to get people to understand to quit getting so invested, even if he was to have done that. While we get so invested in one young man's decision that it breaks everyone's either their heart or it breaks their ego because someone would do that. And, and you know, now money is in this situation. Like money is in college football. If someone was ignorant enough to offer a guy a million dollars to come back, I personally wouldn't blame him. Go get your money. Uh, I'm yeah. sure you probably feel the same way. Like I'm not. I'm not going to be upset because you get paid. Um, but a lot of people got really emotionally invested into um, flipping back to Miami if that was the case. And now that it didn't happen, a lot of people are writing me uh, how how bad they feel that they got so emotionally invested in the situation. Um, I'd seen where you were on your show earlier today. And you were talking about that will route that he was supposed to be covering uh, Lawrence to on. And I don't know anyone that would put a defensive tackle on Lawrence to in, in any situation. Um, 
And then for Miami fans to say they they are so happy that they're getting rid of that, like it's his fault that he couldn't yeah. cover. Like yeah, he's that's never, not a good position. That's that's never supposed to happen. And I think that anything that Miami fans can do to make it look better for them, they will. So I don't know how to tell people about Miami fans that they shouldn't already know. If you're a Florida State fan, you should 100% understand Miami. Well, you should understand that Miami fans are delusional and that they do this exact same thing every time. Yeah, I got nothing else to add to that. That's just – it's just the facts. Yeah. Well, we we do on Labor Day, uh, talking about the LSU-FSU game, here in Orlando at Camping World Stadium. Uh, we will have a two-day party, basically. Uh, we've got basically what they consider a block party uh, the night before the game, and then the night of the game, we have a tailgate. Um, we've already got a preliminary um, – ticket tailor up for that for the people that bought their tailgate tickets to the one um this year in the bowl game so look for when do you want to drop that for everyone what month are you going to um, drop? february we're gonna february. just make it completely open so right now it's um forty dollars um everybody who attended the tailgate should have got an email or at this point um we'll continue to retweet it and tell people hey get this early bird special because once February hits, we're going to really just start um, doing that. We'll probably start marketing extremely heavy, um, you know, a little bit later on, probably like, in, um, I guess I'll say like um, May or June, um, probably around the spring game, we'll make another push. But um, like right now should be good. All you can eat, all you can drink. Um, we'll have cigars. We'll have game. We'll actually have games this time. So um, like, <laughs> so somebody accused us of, like we said, we were going to have, we said we'll be family friendly. I never said we'll have games. But the goal is this time we'll have a little kid's uh, actual youth area for guys to go over there and um, play some games and, and um, like video games and some things like that. So it should be very fun and very interactive. So I can't wait. I, I'm definitely excited for it. And I know a lot of the people that have already been messaging me about it are extremely excited for it. I've had multiple people tell me because of the price of the actual tickets to the game that they hope we set up like we did last time with the screens because they would just like to sit right there and watch the game instead of spending all that money to go inside the camping world. And it'd probably be a nosebleed seat for 400 bucks. And I told them I don't see why we wouldn't have the screens like we did last time. Yeah, I think we'll have them. We'll actually have them set up early <clears throat> um, because there will be other games that will be on that people want to kind of check out. But we'll have we'll, we'll have three lots, I believe, three or four lots um, coming in the fall. But – each lot will have, um, you know, a TV set up and um, we'll have, you know, multiple games on. But we'll definitely have it all set up to where you can watch the game um, from the comfort of wherever you're at. If you bring a chair, you can you can even, like, just bring your chair. You can leave it there and pick it up after the game. Nobody's going to mess with it. I promise it'll be, like, if you're drunk and you forget it, then, you know, that might be on you. But if you leave whatever you got there within reason, um, we'll be there. We actually had a guy who um, – not going to call him out, you know, because he's got his own, got a good job, and I, and I appreciate him. But he had a great – such a great time partying, and he had on some $300 sneakers. And he got a chance to hang out in our porta potty a little longer, and nobody robbed him. So that's how – again, that's how safe the tailgate is because if they could have just – somebody could have came up off of his shoes alone. But that was a blessing. Absolutely. Um, unfortunately, I got to see every bit of that. And um, not knowing that we knew who it was for a quite amount of time, uh, but then finding out, I'm just glad that he, I'm glad that he was good. Um, I was glad that everything worked out on, on in his favor. Uh, James, I know that you've got a watch party and stuff that you got to get to. Um, I appreciate you coming on. Um, we'll talk afterwards. I'm probably going to wrap this thing up here in the next two or three minutes anyway. Uh, might be a little bit longer, but I do appreciate you coming on. All right, man. Well, all right. Enjoy, the, uh, enjoy the national championship game. Go no. Yes, sir. What what I will say that there was a couple of questions um, that were on here about the national championship. I fully expect Georgia to win. Um, it would be great if TCU wins, uh, but I fully expect Georgia to win. So if I had to pick a score, 
Um, I don't know what the line's down to now. I know at one point it was at 12 and a half. I think that Georgia wins the game 34-24. Personally, um, unless uh, they can find a way to nitpick those DBs, um, the way that Ohio State was doing, I just don't think TCU has the caliber of wide receiver that Ohio State did, so I don't know if they're going to be able to pick on those DBs in Georgia as much as – Ohio State did. Um, Hunter says that the line's up to 13 and a half. I'm going with 10 points, and I do think that Georgia wins the game, but that's about as far as it goes. Um, I, like I said, 34 24. I think Georgia pulls out the win. I am surprised that most people are saying that this is going to be the least watched national championship game ever. I'm very surprised that that's what's being said. Now, I, I will say that I believe, obviously, if you had Georgia and Alabama or Georgia and Florida State or Georgia and someone else that's at a high-caliber name, uh, that, yeah, you would probably have more viewership than what you do with TCU. But people have been counting TCU out all year, including myself. I didn't think that they belonged in the, in the uh, playoffs at all. I thought that they didn't play enough talent. To, to be there, and then when they went and handled Michigan the way that they did, I kind of have to take that with a grain of salt, um, and I anticipate that they probably will. I mean, it, it would be awesome if TCU goes and wins this game. I mean, it would be absolutely amazing. Uh, I just don't think that they have enough power or enough utility power there to, to pull that off. I could be completely wrong, but – I don't follow those two teams very well. I know that Georgia has a good, a little bit more than good defense. Um, TCU's got a surprising offense, uh, and surprisingly their front seven for defense have held people, um, it, like Michigan, uh, held them down pretty good. But Georgia's just a different animal. I don't know if TCU's got in the chamber what's necessary to take care of that. And, I again, I hope they do. I want them to because I don't want to hear Georgia back-to-back wins and the national titles. I don't want to hear all that because I literally thought hearing the stuff about Alabama for 10 years was bad, but hearing this Georgia Bulldog stuff for two years now has been absolutely just terrible. Like it's nonstop. I mean, I guess it's better than hearing about the Miami Hurricanes or the Gators, but not by much. I don't want to hear about it. I'm going to hear about it too often. I will touch base a little bit on the DB coach situation for Florida State. A lot of people are in ants. They want um, Florida State to go ahead and hire someone, go ahead and have a DB coach. I want Florida State to take their time up to February. The reason I say that is because I want them to get the best fit for the team. I don't want them just to jump in and get just anyone. I want them to get the guy that's going to fit the system perfectly. Uh, I dropped a video about wanting Antonio Cromartie. I dropped another video about getting uh, Van Dyke out of Miami, not the quarterback, Demetrius Van Dyke, a DB coach there. He was on the list. Uh, Gray was on the list from South Carolina, but they extended him two years and paid him a, a pretty handsome amount of money to stay. So I think he's been pulled off of the list. Then you've got people that are inside the system like Moss, uh, Ratcliffe, Corey Fuller that could be moved up. I fully expect that we're trying to make an outside hire first, and if those don't pan out, then he will promote from within. But as of right now, I don't think that that's the case, and I don't want him to rush and just hire somebody just to do so. Oh, I'm going to read what uh, Till Dog said. Yes, because the last thing we need to see is our cornerbacks get getting missed five times a game. I definitely agree. So I I personally can't wait until the announcement's made, and hopefully it's the hire, the splash hire that we all want. And that way that fans are automatically happy with it, automatically there's no issues, because otherwise it's another thing that Norvell and his staff's going to have to prove that he put the right guy in the spot. And, you know, I think Norvell's done a great job at proving what he can do. I think the staff has done a, a very good job at proving what they can do with not – if you did roster versus roster on the teams that we play, we had the 18th best roster um, in college football, and that was at midseason, not 
at the beginning of the season. At the beginning of the season, they put us at like 64th. Roster was like way down. So for us to be where we are, to get 10 wins, for us to get to the point where Florida State is considered a powerhouse again to an, to an extent, uh, take the words that I'm using and uh, don't read in between too many lines. But for us to go get a 10-win season, this is the 25th time Florida State has gotten a 10-win season. So it's not an easy obstacle to obtain. It's not something that you just go do and it's easy. Um, but Norvell has done it, so now he has, set the, he has set the table. So now anything under that, we would all be very disappointed next year. And like I said, with 85% of your production coming back on both sides of the ball, you should anticipate – a 10 to 11 win season. I mean, it could go better. We could go 12 and 0, I guess. But again, I don't, I'm not putting crazy expectations on a team that last year people were saying would be a six or seven win team at, at best. And I was the one that picked them to go nine and three in the regular season. They did so. I picked them to have a bowl win. They won. And I did all of that preseason before they ever played or snapped the ball in practice or anything. Um, I pulled those receipts a couple of months ago, put those all up on Twitter and also on Facebook, also on the group page. Um, what I will say is I think that Florida State has a good shot due to what they have, due to what they've got um, on, the, on the staff – and in the locker room, what guys they've got, I think they're gonna they're gonna run the table at home for sure. Um, the only one that I look at and I go maybe could be a problem is Pitt at Pitt. Uh, Pitt's a decent team; they're coached very well. It could be a little bit of a problem, um, but I still think that we we have a really good chance of beating them. Then we got to play Clemson at Clemson. Those are the only two games that I'm really worried about. And then if you want to say there's a third one, you would say uh, playing Florida in Gainesville. But I don't think that we're going to have a pro too many problems with Florida this year unless they figure out a quarterback better than the one they just got from Wisconsin because that's not – we know what it's like for quarterbacks to come from there. It, it doesn't usually work out, and I don't think he's experienced good enough to beat us. So I think that I'm not as worried about beating Florida this year um, coming up as I was even last year. I told people that Florida was a better team than their – uh, record indicated, and they stuck with us throughout most of the game this year. Um, so I I'm very excited to see what Florida State's able to do at home, but then the true test come on the road with Clemson, Pitt, and Florida. And then you can consider LSU's game a road game, uh, but really it's a, a backyard game for Florida State being in Orlando. It's only 100 miles uh, about 107 miles to the east. So it's pretty much a home game for Florida State. We ended our season in Camping World Stadium, but so did LSU. They played in the Citrus uh, Cheez-It Bowl uh, on the 2nd, I believe. And we played in the Cheez-It Bowl on the 29th of December. So we ended our seasons in the same uh, stadium. So everybody's they kind of know what the stadium's like. They kind of know what they're dealing with. They've been there before. No surprises. The only thing that I can say that we can surprise LSU with is how many Florida State Seminoles show up fan-wise, and we get that place really rocking. And I think the Florida State has a great shot at beating LSU, but they have 85, 86, somewhere around that percentage of their offense also, also returning. They only lost one wide receiver, from my knowledge, uh, that was a starter. They're bringing back uh, the the Daniel Jones, I think is his name. They're bringing him back, um, which is their quarterback. So it's going to be a very close matchup like we had last year um, in 2022 in New Orleans. But I think Florida State's a little bit more ready for this game coming this year because we've already played LSU. We know what uh, – Kelly likes to run offensively and defensively. So we have the entire offseason and then, you know, spring ball and all that to Jaden Daniels. Y'all, one of them Daniels kids. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Um, I'm bad with, I can tell you his jersey number is five. I'm just bad with names. Um, but Jaden Daniels, if he comes back, I mean, he is coming back. 
Uh, we have to contain him better than we did last year because um, that's the only thing that I think we allowed too much of is him getting in open space and running the ball. We have to eliminate that, put a spy on him at all times so he's not allowed to do that. And I think Florida State can pretty much shut the wide receivers down due to due to the system that we're running the same way that we did this previous year against LSU, we did a great job of shutting the, those deep passes down and even stopping the stuff from underneath that quick hitch route and that quick slant on the inside because of the, the linebackers that we've got. We did a very good job of eliminating a lot of their stuff. If you go back and look at the Florida State LSU game for this year uh, in 2022, we beat them in all facets of the game other than the scoreboard was too – the score was too close. I mean, other than that, we absolutely – just manhandled them all across the board other than that allowing them to score close with us and that was due to our mistakes not what they did well but what we did wrong so and i agree with mike our uh front four at fsu are going to be tough to deal with i 100 percent agree with that and then now we've got so many good rotational pieces behind that that florida state's going to be I think Florida State will be favored in this game, um, and this is way early to be saying this, but I think Florida State will be favored over LSU in this game. Um, I also think that Florida State will be favored in the majority, if not all of their games, except for Clemson this year. But Clemson's lost a lot. Uh, DJ E.G. Ungule, uh, he's gone. He transferred out. So they've got this Klubnik kid. He looked really good in his first start or his first game that he played in. Then in the bowl game against Tennessee, he did not look like a starting quarterback at all. All you needed was a little bit of pressure on him. He threw the ball way too soon to other places. Um, through, just was a very ugly game for Clemson, um, and they couldn't get the ball. They couldn't get the ball moving on the ground either. They had a, a, a very just. It was a bad game for Clemson. Tennessee manhandled them all the way through it. Um, so. I think there's more questions on the Clemson team going into 2023 than the Florida State team. So I'm not going to sit here and say that Florida State's not going to be favored in that one when there's a lot less questions for this Florida State team at this time. And it feels so good to be able to say that because for the past, what, eight years, we haven't been able to say that. You know, at least the last six. We, we haven't been able to say that Florida State's got a favored team over Clemson. And I think in the 2023 season, we'll be able to say that. Um, even though we're going to be playing at Clemson, uh, I still think the Florida State has a great shot at, at, at winning that game. Um, Pitt is always a weird game to play. Florida State plays them kind of like we do NC State. So we got to be careful with them. Uh, we're also playing them at Pitt. So that's not a game that you know we can take lightly or just say we 100% are going to win. Uh, Pitt's a good team. They – they they definitely play at home well. Uh, so once I get to do a little bit more research on their team and who's coming back and kind of what their what their system's going to be this year, I kind of get a better feeling about how that's going to look. Because I will say somewhere around April, maybe a little bit before April, I'll put out my uh, predictions. I'll put out what happens. Um, and Campbell. Uh, while we've been talking, Campbell did commit to go to Tennessee. He will not be coming to Florida State, which, like I told y'all, it was really weird the way he was doing it. Um, so Campbell will be going to Tennessee. Uh, good luck to that young man and everything that he's doing. Uh, but Florida State will be fine this year, everyone. And uh, remember, I think we're going to add probably four or five more transfers to our roster come springtime. So – I want everybody to get ready for that. Um, I want everybody to get ready for what Florida State's going to be able to do on the field and off the field. We've got a really good uh, core set of guys that are coming back. And I really appreciate everybody's support and y'all coming and supporting us at Spear Addicts. Uh, y'all y'all make this all possible. Uh, y'all make me and James and Taylor and Chip, when, he, when they get to be on here, uh, y'all make us uh, really happy to share our – information also share our passion for florida state with all of you we think that y'all are absolutely awesome uh, y'all do a great job at interacting with us in the chat part and any questions that y'all have i try to do my best to get to them 
Uh, I try to do giveaways as much as I possibly can. Um, just really appreciate what all y'all do. I, I think y'all are uh, what makes all this stuff go. I think y'all are what makes it turn. Um, the guy said go Canes. Um, okay. Where are they going? Because it ain't to the ACC championship. Um, but y'all have a good one, man. This is this has been fun tonight. Uh, we hope that y'all uh, enjoyed tonight. I hope y'all enjoyed the uh, – I hope you enjoy this game. I hope it goes um, as we would like it to versus the way it's probably going to go. But hopefully Florida State's in this conversation next season. Hopefully for 2023, it's a potential that we make it to the playoffs. It's very possible. Everybody uh, – I'm your host at Spiratics, Chris Frazier. I hope y'all have a good night. Go Knowles.